Hello everybody, the Lawn Gnome is here. I'm sorry, sir, I must have taped over that. So today I come to you guys with another review in regards to music, and if you are new to my channel in regards to my music reviews, first of all, welcome. Just so you all know, when it comes to reviewing music, I always like to review it in pairs. That basically means two albums from two separate artists, unless this crazy coincidence happens where one artist puts out two albums a year, which has been known to happen every now and again, but today we're going to be talking about two different albums, and there are going to be in the world of hard rock and heavy metal and one to a very interesting degree. So let's talk about the new album from one of the greatest bands in thrash metal history. We're talking about Dave Mustaine and his band Megadeth with their 15th album. Can you believe this? 15 albums made by Megadeth up until this point. And this, of course, is titled Dystopia. It's crazy how dystopia is found everywhere. In books, in movies, in music now. I think that this is the second album that I've purchased with the title of Dystopia in it in the last maybe four years. The last time I purchased it was one of the newest albums from the band Iced Earth. But this is Megadeth's new album, and it is definitely different from their last album, which is called Super Collider, which is also an album that a lot of people really didn't care for, and that was just because of the fact that Dave Mustaine went outside the box, pretty much like what he did with Risk a few years before that, and just tried to do something a little bit different in terms of the music that he writes. But this album is back to the old Megadeth, and that's all that I'm pretty much going to say. If you like listening to Megadeth, I'm talking about everything from Peace Sells But Who's Buying, all the way up to their last Hall 4 Super Collider, this is pretty much what you're going to get. It's really nothing crazy new. I mean, Dave Mustaine is doing his exact same thing, using a political mindset, using the growling, using the hard riffs of the guitar, and the bass, and the drums, and all of that stuff that makes Megadeth Megadeth. And... Again, they're of course talking about new political signs of the times, and you can definitely see exactly where he stands in terms of his political views, but here's what I'm going to say, guys. I'm not saying that Dystopia is a bad album, but I said this when I last reviewed the newest album by Weezer. It's just getting to the point where you wonder why these guys are still putting out albums. I mean, they've had a very prestigious career, Megadeth has, and the fact that every single time a new Megadeth album comes out, it really isn't anything that shatters my mind. It's just another Megadeth album. I mean, there are very good songs, but I really can't tell you what the best one is, because I think one of the biggest faults of this album is how all of these songs just sound completely the same. At least in the older days, you were able to figure out Sweating Bullets. You were able to be figuring out Anger 18. You were able to figure out The World Needs a Hero, but here, not so much. So... Like Weezer, I may have to do the same thing and just hang up my fandom and just say I think it's time to let them go. I did this with Weezer. I have no intentions to buy any of their new albums unless it just completely blows my mind. I'm going to retire before they do in terms of my fandom towards them. But Megadeth fans rejoice. It's a good Megadeth album. Go pick it up if you love your Megadeth. Now let's talk about something completely different in the world of metal. I think it was Mitch from Pentatonix in a YouTuber's React video of this act, and he said, how did this happen? Baby metal. Guys, I gotta tell you something. It is real, and I think they may be here to stay. When I first saw the video of Gimme Chocolate, and I saw these three little Japanese girls singing Japanese like something out of an anime intro song to heavy metal riffs in the background. We're talking like serious hard metal riffs. I was just looking at it and I was just dumbfounded and awestruck all at the same time. I couldn't believe what I was watching. And yet for some strange reason, I kind of liked it. But when I listened to the whole debut album... It just didn't really seem like something that I felt had longevity because they tried to stick every single genre into this sound. You had everything from metal, J-pop, and even 
hip-hop. And I was just like saying to myself, this is just too much. It's all over the place. But they made a new album, and it's called Metal Resistance. And when I saw Spectrum Pulse review this album and have nothing but good things to say, I had to see what this album was all about. And I heard the first single, which was Karate. I was really impressed, and when I heard the album, I was even more impressed because they found their niche, they found consistency. I think what they're deciding to do is have the progressive sound in their album, because when you hear the first song on this album, which is called Road to Resistance, they actually have Dragon Force doing some of the music, and they're a very well-known band in the world of epic and melodic metal, and other songs on this album are really great to listen to. I love Awadama Fever, I love them more, Metal Taro, GJ, No Rain, No Rainbow. These are great songs, and I can listen to them over and over and over again. But one of the few things that makes me a little nervous is because of the fact that these aren't kids that are writing music. They're just singing it. And as a matter of fact, if you open the CD, it says that only one of them sings and the other two scream. And I don't really find that a great example of longevity. I really feel that if this band is going to stick around, because they're making such a major impact now, they were on the Late Show with Stephen Colbert performing Gimme Chocolate. That's a huge accomplishment for them. And the metal world is starting to take notice, good, bad, or indifferent. But if they could really try and get these girls to stick with this, give them an opportunity to write their own stuff, give the screamers a chance to sing, because I'm sure they've got good voices. I read up on them. All three of them were in, all three of them were in separate J-pop bands, and they brought them together to try this new experiment, and I would love to see this new experiment really do something great for heavy metal. Heavy metal has always been frowned upon by the general music-listening populace, except for those people that love it, and I really feel that this could be some way to bring all these people that have shunned metal for so many years saying, metal is not about screaming, it's not about looking extremely dark, and it has nothing to do with sacrificing goats in your basement. Metal can be very well thought, it can be very well written, and there can be some beautiful things in that music. And especially for something that has its major influence from classical music format, I really hope that Baby Metal is going to be this bridge. And I highly recommend, if you just want to hear something so different from everything that is out there today, listen to Metal Resistance. And if their third album does in fact come out and it still sticks with this consistency, you've got a fan here. So that's my review for that and the new Megadeth album, two albums that are definitely worth a listen. And I am hoping that you enjoyed this review today. So please put your comments in the box below. I would love to have a discussion with you on these two bands. And I will see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words. I'm a shade green, the only gun I need.